Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about your multi-step synthesis. And multi-step synthesis, you should realize, is the backbone of the pharmaceutical industry, where typically it's used to make uh, a lot of the very important medicines that, that we need every day. You're going to actually be making hexafenylbenzene, which is an organic material, and I'm going to show you some of its potential uses in the next couple of slides as, as uh, just as background. But let's take a look uh, at hexafenylbenzene. Let's think about it. You've got a benzene ring surrounded by six other benzene rings. Every single proton on that benzene ring has been substituted with another benzene ring on that central ring there. It's very crowded, and so it actually forms sort of a propeller shape. So all six of those rings, that they're really all out of plane and more parallel to each other than um, side by side is actually shown there in the picture. So a very interesting structure. And doing this total synthesis is really great because it's going to allow you to use a lot of the techniques uh, that you've learned in organic lab and to revisit a lot of uh, really uh, unique and interesting and modern and fun chemistry that you've learned about in both lab and lecture. So hexafenylbenzene recently has been used as a precursor to graphene-like uh, conducting nanomaterials. So uh, it's been a precursor to uh, conducting organic conductors uh, such as compound 10A nanomaterials. And 10A, I'll show you what that's what's been done with that recently. Uh, that's been uh, a version or derivative that's been reacted with the cobalt uh, complex and when you take that and you, you heat it up at high temperatures, that forms uh, carbon nanotubes, either bamboo shaped or straight carbon nanotubes, depending on the conditions. Very interesting. And um, these are all uh, graphite like structures. So graphite is flat sheets of fused benzene rings. Just sort of uh, picture benzene rings just fused together, just as shown in the core of that molecule, but it's an infinite sheet. And here, um, we're able to use this precursor, which actually comes from hexafenylbenzene, to make carbon nanotubes. Synthetic route to make carbon nanotubes is shown there in the picture. Okay, so let's analyze the synthesis of hexafenylbenzene. And you remember, when we do retrosynthetic analysis, you start with the product and work backwards. So again, looking at hexafenylbenzene, we realize that central ring is it, it you can't make that through an electrophilic aromatic substitution you can't uh, it's really hard to make uh, um, try or really uh, even harder to make tetra substituted benzene rings through electrophilic substitution so what we do is the opposite we actually make the aromatic ring last we install the six benzene rings and then aromatize the six membered ring that they surround to form the aromatic system. And we do that through the direct precursor you see there through loss of carbon monoxide. So that compound you see there, that bridged by cyclic compound, spontaneously, it's going to spontaneously lose carbon monoxide and put two more electrons as it goes, as the CO, as the CO goes away, it's going to put two more electrons into the pi system in the six-membered ring and make the six pi benzene ring aromatic system. And so we're going to make that precursor. We're going to make that precursor by a Diels-Alder reaction using uh, the five-membered ring uh, cyclopentadiene carbonyl system that you see there. That's got four benzene rings installed. And we're going to put each pair of those benzene rings into that compound by an aldol condensation, um, as shown uh, just above there. Uh, and one of those precursors is going to be made through an oxidation reaction that you're going to do first. Uh, likewise, the alkyne, that's the other deals all the reaction partner, is going to be made through bromination and then a double E2 elimination starting from trans-stilbene. So I want to take a closer look at a really important reaction, that's the aldol and show you how to recognize potential aldol, uh, um, 
aldol type products aldol derived products so if you see an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl as i've shown there in that five membered ring and in the one you're going to be doing it's similar but there actually are two uh, alpha beta unsaturated double bonds and so it's going to be a double aldol condensation but let's look at the generic one first and it doesn't have to be a five membered ring it could be uh, any other sized ring and it could also be an acyclic compound as long as you've got an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl you can potentially make that via an aldol condensation and the way to visualize that is disconnect uh, in your mind or on paper the alpha beta bond that's the bond that forms last and visualize or write at the beta carbon a carbonyl so the beta carbon is derived from a carbonyl in the final structure the alpha carbon gets deprotonated and attacks the beta carbon carbonyl makes the alcohol and you lose water and have your alpha beta unsaturated system and if you look at the reaction sequence that's actually the precursor that can make uh, the, the, the cyclopentenone that we, we show, you take that um, dicarbonyl, treat it with base, you deprotonate alpha to the carbonyl carbon, as we all know those are relatively acidic protons, and then you attack the carbonyl carbon to make the alcohol, and then you can do uh, a very facile uh, uh, loss of water, and after the dehydration you have your, your aldol uh, alpha beta unsaturated uh, carbonyl derived product. Let's look at uh, potential Diels Alder uh, uh, products and the way to recognize a potential uh, Diels Alder product is to look and find six membered rings that contain double bonds. It's really that simple. Any, any compound that you see or any uh, substructure of a compound that contains a six-membered ring with an alkene is potentially, after further analysis, potentially uh, makeable via a Diels-Alder reaction. And what you want to do is visualize the disconnection directly opposite the alkene. I've labeled the alkene with numbers 1, 2. It's really helpful to number all the carbons when you do the disconnection, even when you do the forward reaction, to do some good bookkeeping and make sure that um, you don't um, get confused. So we're disconnecting bonds 5, 6, and bonds 3, 4. And when you do that, you get your dienophile and your diene, right? Your diene uh, is the part that results in the alkene side of the product, okay? So remember, you draw your three arrows in the mechanism. You should be able to do that and connect your diene, your dienophile. One way to always think about this is in Diels Alder and related reactions of conjugated systems typically typically it's the ends of the conjugated systems in this case atoms three and six those are the ones that react and they're going to react with carbons four and five to form the new bonds there okay so the Diels Alder mechanism is something that you should be well aware of and, and remember from organic lecture now <coughs> if you have um, a diene in a six-membered ring that is a non-conjugated diene, you can likewise disconnect that to the alkyne and the um, butadiene, the butadiene components of the starting diene, and react those and get exactly the six-membered ring diene shown. Now for bicyclics, and you have a bicyclic in your total synthesis, it's also a six-membered ring. It's just bridged by an atom uh, on top there by a carbon atom. In your case, it's going to be a carbon, uh, a, a carbonyl, actually, that's the bridging species. And you can redraw that if you want as a flat structure, and it becomes a little more obvious that that's derived simply from cyclopentadiene and the alkyne. Okay, so uh, you should be able to draw arrow, arrow pushing, uh, an arrow pushing mechanism to make all these and understand that, that this is very generalizable. I know it's not the first time you're seeing this, but it's good to review. And take a look at, again, that last reaction, and it's the ends of the pi system. So it's the, it, it's the ends of the diene 
make sure you see that, that are the ones reacting with the two alkyne carbons, and that will give you your product. Okay, so that's the very interesting way to recognize potential uh, uh, Diels Alder uh, derived products. Okay, so as always, make sure you understand the purpose of all the reagents, solvents, etc., and so on, and, and every workup step uh, that's used in each, of each reaction that you do. Uh, again, a lot of this uh, is application of techniques that you've already learned. So it's, it's really great to be able to, to use a lot of the things that we've been studying uh, all along and apply them in an actual synthesis. And of course, carefully review and understand all your safety and waste handling procedures in your lab manual. And good luck and congratulations on doing a total synthesis.